Bible scholars, we're going to dive into one of the most intense scriptures that you've ever heard. Um, so if you would repeat it with me, because I know every Christian has it memorized, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, and that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. I uh, want to dive deeper into that, but let's, let's tell a story. Actually, it's a story of the future. You see, April 13th, 2019, I should become a father. My first son, Carson, will come into this world. And for the last seven and a half months, eight, six and a half months now, I, I begin to think about how I want this world to be even better for him. I begin to think of all of the, the good that this world has, and I want to share it with him. I'm a hockey player. Man, do I want my son to play hockey. If he doesn't, it's fine. It's fine. His mother won't let him play football. But man, hockey. If that is, Carson can play hockey. But on the same note of all the good, I begin to think of all the bad and the stories that come and my heart begins to well up inside because how can I protect little Carson from all of the bad that this world has? And I know I can't prevent everything, but I think scripture is clear in how we can begin to transform our society just by the little actions that I choose to do for my son. I don't know if you guys are hip with social media. I don't know if you follow the news recently. Some of you here have a clean shaven face, but like myself, I don't shave very regularly. But there's this company called Gillette. Some of you may own their razors. Some of you might have thrown them away recently. And why, I'll tell you, because they released a new ad. It was a minute and 34 seconds exactly. I watched it about a dozen times because half of my friends on Twitter hated it. They despised it. Matter of fact, some of them put their razors in the toilet and I chuckled because then they had to go get it out to throw it away, just can't flush a razor. And the other half praised it and shared it and said, yes, this is what needs to happen in our society. Now, the slogan for Gillette used to be the best a man can get. Because to be honest, to shave the under part of your neck can be a little scary. I don't know if any of you had a, a straight razor shave before. Like every time I pass by this barber shop, I know it's legit because it has that blue, white, and red spinny pole in front of it. I always go, one day I'm gonna get a straight razor shave. But I'm scared because my neck in those veins, so I never do. And so I bought a Gillette Mach 3 razor 14 years ago. I didn't start growing facial hair until about three. Um, and I haven't shaved since. Um, but I bought the Gillette Mach 3 and I shaved with it regularly because I was told every time you shaved, your hair would grow back thicker. It's a lie. I'll tell you that right now. It's a lie. It's not the truth. I shaved for 10 years before I could grow this beard. But this ad, it comes out, and I don't know how to react. And so I watch it once, twice. I, I pull my wife and I say, watch this with me. What's your feelings towards this? Let me describe to you what it does. Opens. There's a man standing in the mirror. He almost looks somber, like something might be wrong. And in the background, the audio begins to play, and I'll read it to you here. The Me Too movement against sexual assault, bullying, toxic masculinity. And I begin to understand why so many of my friends over here didn't like the ad. Because within the first 30 seconds of this short piece, it made me feel inadequate. It made me feel guilty. 
Now, I've never been accused of sexual assault, though I have been a bully. I remember it. Travis. So, I'm Trevor, and if you call me Travis, this memory sparks. But Travis was making fun of me because I was a pastor's kid. My mother had boxing gloves in her office for some reason. So I put the boxing gloves on and I tell him, here, put on some as well. They weren't boxing gloves. As a matter of fact, they were like weights. So his arms were heavy and we were young. And I boxed this kid in the nursery and I beat him down because he made me feel and so as I thought to this ad, the ad made me feel something because I'm part of the problem. Maybe it's a bit of toxic masculinity, but sure, it was definitely bullying. And yeah, I've changed and I've grown. But the ad is a minute and 34 seconds. And the first 30 made me feel pain. But let me tell you, the last minute showed me hope. It said that their ad was once the best a man can get, but they want to change it to become the best a man can be. Why is that so divisive? If anything, that's biblical. It shouldn't be about what I can get, but what about what I can become? Let's go deeper. John 3, 16 through 21. And it says this. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And anyone who believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. We know that part. But it continues. God sent his son into the world not to judge it, but to save it through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. And the judgment is based on this fact. This fact. For their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light. They refuse to go near it for fear that their sins will be exposed. See, I think my camp here on the right, on Twitter, that disliked this ad, liked the darkness that they may have been hiding in. And I don't want to accuse any of them, but they might have been like me. Trevor, 12 years old, putting on those boxing gloves to knock out the kid who made fun of me. It continues. But those who do what is right come into the light so that others can see what God Create the best world for my son, Carson Wayne Cherry Holmes, means that I first need to come into the light so that I might be exposed for what I might not see right now because I'm so clothed in darkness. You see, the ad goes on to say these words The boys watching today will be the men of tomorrow. And it's only by challenging ourselves to do more that we can get closer to doing our best. And here in John 3, 16 through 21, we know that Jesus came and died for you and for me. But it also says that we must come forth into the light so that our past iniquities may be exposed before the Lord so that we can be freed from what's from what once held us back toxic masculinity 
bullying, sexual harassment, so much more that you or even I might be going through. Step into the light with me. Because to be honest, I'm a little nervous for April 13th. I've taken all the baby classes. I know how to swaddle one. Rochelle's really going to do most of the hard work, let's be honest. But to make this world better, I'm going to do what I can. But please, church, will you step into the light with me so that you too can help make this world a better place, not only for Carson Wayne, but for your children and their children. So that when the boys who watch the men step into the light become men, they too step right into the light right after. Lord, you are good. Thank you for peace that you provide. Thank you for the, the single final sacrifice that you gave. Convict me to continue to stand in this light that might get hot, that might get uncomfortable, but continue to convict me to stand here so that I might not have anything else that's holding me back from being what you 